Hello, my name is Caitlin Trujillo, and this is Webinar A, Features of Vision for Chromebooks. Today we are going to talk a little bit about my background and experience, the features of NetApp Vision for Chrome, how teachers can troubleshoot within their classroom, and why Vision is a great option for classroom management software. I am a senior account manager with the NetApp team. I was an English language arts teacher for 10 years and have earned my master's in education. During my time in the classroom, I worked with all levels of students from honor track classes to English language development and reading intervention. Five years of that time, I spent working with devices in the classroom, so I had the opportunity to understand how technology can support differentiation and authentic learning. I also participated in one-to-one -one rollout at two separate campuses and worked with Vision for Chrome. When I left the classroom, I was excited to find myself in a position where I get to share my experience with this product. First, I'd like to discuss the features of Vision for Chromebooks. Vision for Chromebooks is integrated with Google Classroom, so Vision rosters are generated from your classroom rosters. Each of the features of Vision for Chromebooks is accessible via the teacher's toolbar. This is present in the top right-hand corner of the teacher's application. The one-click functionality of these features allows teachers to monitor and interact with student devices throughout the period. We will go over each of these features today. Let's take a look at the teacher's application. When the teacher opens a vision application on their device, they will see a screen with each of their Google Classroom pages. This teacher, for example, teaches Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Speech and Debate. When you hover over the top of your Google Classroom page, you will see how many students are enrolled. So in this class, for example, we have three students, and this is the Google Classroom code. Vision and Google Classroom sync frequently. So if you have a student enroll after you've started the session, you can click Sync with Google Classroom here to pull the most up-to-date information. Once you select a class, the next screen will populate with all of the students enrolled. It's normal for students to have this black screen with a slash because we haven't actually started the session until we click here. Once the session has started, Students will receive a pop-up with a request to share. This pop-up is required by Google because we are not only capturing their browser, but their entire device, including any applications running in the background. This is something that really sets us apart from other classroom management software. These three screens represent the three stages of a student joining the Vision Classroom. Bob Taylor is listed as offline. That means he's absent from class or not logged into his device. Kristen Thomas has this exclamation point, which means she's received the pop-up with the request of you, but has not accepted it. I will accept it now so you can see how that looks for the teacher. And Victor accepted the request immediately, and we can see a live view of his entire device from this thumbnail. One option teachers aren't always aware of is that you do not have to leave your offline students in your view. You can access your toolbar and disable show offline students and they will disappear. Now you can monitor students from the thumbnails or select students for a closer view. This first feature is live view, and this is a great opportunity to hold students accountable as well as provide differentiation and support for struggling students. If a student is off topic or distracted, you can play sound from their device or take a snapshot to share with parents. When I was simply monitoring, I would often do so from this thumbnail. This allows you to see at a glance all of the student's screens. If Kristen were to Google a games tab, or move off topic, it's readily apparent. Or if Kristen closes her screen, we will see the background and any applications that may run beyond the browser. Now that we have discussed starting a session and monitoring students in thumbnail and live view, we are going to dive a little deeper into each of the features of the toolbar. Each of these features can be applied to an individual student, a group of students, or the whole class. After you have started your session and feel comfortable with monitoring, the next feature is demo mode. This allows you as the teacher to share your screen out to each of the student's devices. Their devices are locked and every student has a front row seat to your instruction or demonstration. If you open a student view first in live view and then share your screen, you can share a student screen out to the class without needing to involve any other programs. You can also project a student's live view to the board and play their audio for a quick class presentation. From the teacher's application, you can select one student, two students, or I'm going to not select any students and apply the feature to the entire class. Once you have your presentation ready, you select demo mode. Here, it gives me the option to share my main or extended screen. When I share my extended screen, you will see my own screen, which is a view of the student's devices replicated to each of them. 
To disengage, you simply select demo mode again. This is a great feature for providing instructions, sharing images for a warm up, or a demonstration which requires students to clearly read graphs, formulas, or detailed information that's not practical for a projector. The next feature of our toolbar is the messaging feature. This is great for reminders to the whole class or for individual redirect and support. I would use this feature if my students were in small groups and I was working with one group of students. I don't need to interrupt that one-to-one -one time to walk across the room for a quick reminder. I would also use this feature to encourage students who are struggling by sending them reminders from the lesson or key terms. And for my English learners, I could send them a whole sentence frame to get started. From the teacher's view, you might notice that Kristen, for example, is off topic. She's distracted by the opportunity to play a game during group work. I can send her a quick reminder by clicking Kristen, clicking on message, and then sending her a reminder. Please get back to your speech. Thank you. From here, I can choose to show the message on the whole screen or as a pop-up in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to select whole screen, and when it shows on the student device, it locks the device so they can't do anything until they click got it, confirming that they did see and acknowledge the message that you sent. The next feature is the ability to push a link directly to student devices. This link automatically opens a new tab in the student's browser, but does not close the tab they are already working in. This is great for speeding up transitions throughout the lesson cycle or helping students who need individualized support. Students may not be quick at navigating between tabs and windows on their devices or just need direction and suggestions throughout the lesson and can benefit from links provided by the teacher. In order to use the push a link feature, you can select students or push a link to the class. Once you select push a link and start typing, it will populate links that you've used. I'm going to push the website speechinnovate.org to all students. This can be used for warm-ups or activities that don't require you to limit the browsing experience. If you are pushing a link for a quiz or a focused activity, you can lock students to a single link that you have pushed. Simply go to configure filter web. The website has been added to the on the fly list. Make sure you only have that on the fly lock selected and then click filter web to engage that lock. Students can no longer navigate away from that site. The next feature is the ability to blank screen the student's devices. This does much more than that actually. It locks the entire device so that students cannot access their mouse or keyboard or navigate away from that blank screen. This is great for drawing individual student attention, pausing for instructions, or disabling devices between activities. From the vision application, the teacher can select a student and blank his screen and ask for his attention. And again, to disengage, you click blank screen. The filter web feature is the next icon on the toolbar. This is used to lock a specific link on the fly or create a broader filtering experience for the students. This is a great feature for class projects, such as a web quest that only uses specific websites. The teacher creates a filter web list and applies it to the student's browsing experience, keeping students focused and on track. This is also a great intervention for students who need help navigating quickly to less unnecessary websites as they will populate as clickable links in the student's browser. And of course, this can be used as an intervention for students who are frequently navigating to the wrong websites during the lesson. From the teacher application, you have to first configure the filter. This menu tells Vision which filter to apply. This allows the teacher to save multiple filters and apply them as needed throughout the day or for different student populations. Vision has preloaded the Google Productivity filter list for our users, which will allow students to access all of their Google apps for education, but not search using the Google as a search engine. Once this filter list is selected with one click, it can be applied to the students in the class. Once it is applied, students cannot navigate away from the filter, and if they do, they will receive a notification as well as a list of allowable sites. One important question I would like to answer today is how to create a personalized web filter. This requires one extra step, but once the filter has been generated and saved to Vision, it can be accessed at any time. I think the easiest way to create a filter is in Google Docs. This allows you to save the list on your drive, share it with teachers, and update it or reload it as necessary. Once you open a Google Doc, you simply copy and paste whichever websites you would like to keep the students focused on. These are the websites students will be allowed to visit and each website should be typed or copied and pasted on its own line. The document should be named in a way that will allow you to identify it from other filters. Then you want to save the document locally, file, download as, 
plain text document. This file will save at its default folder. In my case, this is my downloads folder. When I return to my vision application, I go back to configure filter web, select to add a new list and retrieve that recently saved list from my downloads folder. It is now available as a filter list on my new menu. You can see the list with five items. And if you select the list, you will see the websites it contains. The same as before, you select your filter, apply, and then select filter web feature in your toolbar to apply that to the students. In addition to each of these toolbar features, you have the option to change certain aspects of your view in the application. First, you can manipulate the student thumbnails. If you push control minus, the icons will shrink in size. If you push control plus, the icons will grow in size. These size options are great for rearranging your classroom. If we add back in Bob, you can see that students can be dragged and rearranged for your seating chart. They can also be sorted alphabetically from the menu. Or when I was a teacher, I liked to put my most high need students in the top row so they were always visible and I could quickly push out differentiation and support. The control plus creates a large enough view that you can usually see the websites they are on or the projects they are working from, even from that thumbnail view. There are a couple of other options in this menu as well, including a dark theme and removing students' names and photos. If you have a student leave your class to work with another teacher, that teacher will not be able to capture the student unless you stop the class or dismiss that student. You can see now the student shows as dismissed. To recapture them, you simply select recall the class upon their return. As we are going over the features, I mentioned that each could be applied and canceled by clicking the feature on the toolbar. Another option is the stop all button, which will release anything that has been applied to the students in the class. This is great if you have different filters or group work happening all at once. Finally, it's important, especially for secondary teachers, that you stop the class at the end of the period. As I mentioned, a student cannot be picked up by another teacher if you have an active session. You can stop the class by clicking here to return to your Google Classroom homepage. This will set you up to select the next period or class session you would like to view. There are some easy steps you can take in your classroom to ensure that your vision for Chrome software is correctly installed and connected to your students. If you experience any technology concerns, there are a couple of suggestions for troubleshooting on your own. Make sure that the Vision Classroom is synced to Google Classroom. You can do this by selecting the Sync with Google button that was mentioned at the beginning. Make sure you push the Start button. The application does not begin just by opening it. Make sure that students are logged into the device with their school domain, not a personal account, and that they are using the school's network, not a personal hotspot. Students cannot be captured by more than one teacher, so make sure the previous period's teacher is not still capturing the student in an active session. Lastly, you can type Chrome colon slash slash extensions into their Chrome browser and see that both the student application and student extension for vision are installed. These are some of the easy first steps you can take to troubleshoot our most common concerns. Lastly, I want to touch on the value of classroom management software. Vision provides a technology solution for a technology classroom. Students do not have to physically close their devices when you need their attention or have other disruptive movement during transitions. Classroom management software allows you to manage the student devices from the student devices. Features like filtering the web or pushing links keep students focused and allows teachers more effectively to use their class time. More students have more time to learn across their school day, leading to better academic outcomes for all. Vision is not only a tool for behavior, but a tool for academic intervention and support. I'm personally very passionate about meeting the needs of all learners, and Vision allows you to quickly connect with your struggling students or provide language support and accommodation for your students with special needs. Using Vision allows you to capitalize on authentic teaching and learning. You can quickly push out new discoveries, share group work, and hold students accountable throughout the lesson without requiring the use of any other programs. I hope this webinar was useful and that you feel inspired to capture back class time and improve student learning using vision. Thank you for your time.